Hello students and welcome back to another geometry video. You know what to do, pause the video, try these problems in your notes, and then unpause it to do them with me. So, we are asked to state the theorem we can use to show that the quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram. So, in this first diagram I notice that I have uh, an opposite pair of sides congruent because they're both equal to 30 meters and parallel because they have these red arrows here. So this tells me that this is the opposite sides parallel and congruent congruent theorem. The long name, but opposite sides parallel and congruent theorem. The next uh, quadrilateral, I notice uh, the opposite sides are 7 inches, 7 inches, and the other pair of opposite sides is 5 inches, 5 inches. So this is the, uh, the parallelogram. Parallelogram. Opposite. Oops, opposite, not side. Opposite sides. Converse. The parallelogram opposite sides converse tells us that the second quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right, and lastly, our last quadrilateral has the opposite angles. One pair is both 65, and the other pair is both 115. So this is the parallelogram opposite angles converse woohoo so remember how we mentioned in the section 7.3 video to make sure that you know the names of these theorems for this this exact reason you might be asked how do you know that this is a parallelogram you can't just say oh yeah that's a parallelogram you need to be able to say why okay Nice review of last video. Let's move on to what we have for today. Today, we're gonna continue talking about parallelograms, but now we're gonna talk about special parallelograms. So, uh, specifically, you should know what rhombuses, rectangles, and squares are. So these are the special parallelograms. Uh, and what, what makes them so special? Why are they so special? We're learn, we'll learn about that in this video. Our success criteria is that you can use properties of rhombuses to solve problems. So today we're, we're gonna know what rhombuses, rectangles, and squares are. In this video, we're gonna look more specifically at rhombuses. In a future video, we'll look at specifics on rectangles. And you'll see, uh, with, between both of these videos, you'll see how squares fit into the mix. So, without further ado, some vocab words that we need to know, we need to be on the same page about for section 7.4, is what is a rhombus, rectangle, and a square? And we're gonna look more in depth at each of these things in a future slide. A rhombus has four congruent sides, a rectangle, has four congruent angles or four right angles, and a square has both four congruent sides, four right angles. Now, if a quadrilateral has four congruent angles, they have to be right angles because four congruent angles that add up to 360 degrees, oh, that means that each angle has to be 90 degrees. So, uh, four congruent angles is the same thing as four right angles when we're talking about a quadrilateral. Okay, now we're going to dive in deeper with each of these shapes. So, let's talk about rhombuses first. It has four congruent sides. So, a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. So what this if and only if means is if, uh, if it's a rhombus, 
then we have four congruent sides. It also means if we have four congruent sides, then we have a rhombus. So it goes both ways. That's what the if and only if means, is both of these uh, phrases can be used as the hypothesis conclusion, or you can switch them around and it's still true. So the, the original statement and its converse are both true. So if you have a rhombus, you automatically know that you have all four sides congruent. And if you see something with all four sides congruent, ah, it must be a rhombus. Okay, so that's all we need for a rhombus is it's a parallelogram. It is a parallelogram. So we also need all of these uh, sides to be parallel. But that kind of comes with, if I know that all the sides are the same, I know that all the sides are going to be parallel as well. Uh, because if opposite sides are congruent, then I have a parallelogram, right? Opposite sides converse, which we talked about in the entry task and learned about in section 7.3. So I know that this is a parallelogram, uh, but even more specifically, it is a rhombus. So a rhombus is a type of parallelogram that specifically has all four sides the same. Okay, so now let's move on to a rectangle. What's so special about a rectangle? So a rectangle has four right angles and a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles. So again, that if and only if means if we have a rectangle then four right angles. And if we have four right angles, then we have a rectangle. So it goes both ways. The original statement and its converse are both true. And again, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. And we can see, remember the opposite angles converse tells us that this quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram. So a rectangle is a specific type of parallelogram that has all four angles congruent. All four angles are right angles. Okay, uh, you, you may have heard also that like, oh, well in a rectangle, the opposite sides have to be congruent. That actually comes with it. All we have to have to have a rectangle is all four angles are right angles. That's all we need because that tells us that this is a parallelogram and if we have a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So it is true that opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, but not because that's the definition of a rectangle. Uh, it comes with it because a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. Okay. Now, lastly, but not least, a square. What's so special about a square? You could argue that a square is the most special of the three uh, types of parallelograms we've talked about today. So a square has four congruent sides and four right angles. It is also a parallelogram. Now, a square, or excuse me, a quadrilateral is a square if and only if it is a rhombus and a rectangle. So a square is a rhombus and a rectangle at the same time because it has four congruent sides. That's the rhombus piece. That's the rhombus piece. And it has four congruent angles or four right angles. So that's the rectangle piece. So it is, it is literally a rhombus and a rectangle at the exact same time. So if, if I have a square, then it's a rhombus rectangle hybrid at the same time. And if 
It's a rhombus rectangle hybrid. Then it's a square. So again, if and only if means this works both ways. If you see these markings, square. And if you know that it's a square, you can draw these markings. Goes both ways. So you can see why we're not going to have, uh, we're going to have two parts of section 7.4. First part's going to be about rhombuses. Second part's going to be about rectangles. You can see why we're not going to have a third part about squares. Because squares are just rhombuses and rectangles at the same time. So if we learn about rhombuses, we know more about squares. And if we learn about rectangles, we learn more about squares. Because a square is a rhombus and a rectangle at the same time. So if you're more of a visual person, I think that this will help you uh, understand maybe a little bit better what we're talking about when we say a rhombus and a rectangle together is a square. So, uh, in this picture, you'll see that we have, you know, this outside box, and uh, let me color code, because I'm a color coder. This outside box contains all the parallelograms. So parallelograms are inside of this red box that I just drew, uh, which means that the opposite sides are parallel and a ton of other things. We have parallelograms within the red box. Now. Within the blue circle, everything inside of this blue circle is a rhombus, has four congruent sides. Doesn't matter what it looks like, as long as it has four congruent sides, it could look like this, it could look like this, it doesn't totally matter as long as all the four sides are congruent. And within this purple circle, or oval, ellipse, whatever you want to call it, within this purple uh, circular shape, <laughs> we have all of the rectangles. Four right angles. It's a parallelogram. It's a parallelogram. See, notice how rectangles are still within the red box that is parallelograms, uh, but they specifically have four right angles. Now, if we look at the overlap between the blue and the purple circles, we get this green circle on the inside, and this is squares. So a square is a rhombus because it's in the blue circle. It is also a rectangle because it's in the purple circle, and it is also a parallelogram because it is in this red box. So I think that this box right here, this Venn diagram of sorts, can help us see the relationships between parallelograms, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Okay, so now that we've had an overview of all of those, that was our learning target, was knowing about properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, our success criteria asked specifically about rhombuses. So let's get specific. For any rhombus, Q, R, S, T, decide whether the statement is always or sometimes true. Draw a diagram and explain your reasoning. <clears throat> okay, so it told me for any rhombus, Q, R, S, T. So I know I have a rhombus. So all four sides, whoops. All four sides are congruent. This is not a perfect rhombus, doesn't matter as long as we know all four sides are congruent. <clears throat> now, it says, is angle Q equal to angle S, is that always or sometimes true? It would help if I put the vertices on here. So let's see, Q, R, S, T. Remember, you have to go around in a circle like we talked about in uh, section 5.2. I can put a link to that in the description if you want it. Uh, so we're looking at angle Q and angle S, and we're asking, is that always congruent, or is that sometimes, or excuse me, is that always true, or is that sometimes true? Is angle Q and angle S, are they always congruent? Well, they are opposite angles. And we know that a rhombus is a parallelogram. 
Like, no doubt about it, a rhombus is always a parallelogram. So yes, this is always. Always because of the parallelogram opposite angles theorem. So because this is a parallelogram, any rhombus is a parallelogram, I know opposite angles have to be congruent. All right, now let's look at part B. I'm gonna draw another rhombus. Sides are congruent. We have Q, R, S, T, and we want to know, is angle Q congruent to angle R? Well, I can see right now that they're not. Angle Q is obtuse, angle R is acute. So I can always tell, or so I can already tell that like, in this case, it is, it's not true. So it's, it can't be always, because right here it's not true. But could it be sometimes true? In order for, for the consecutive angles to be congruent, they need to add up, to, they need to be supplementary. So in order for them to, to be supplementary and be the same, they would need to be 90 degree angles. Because 90 plus 90 gives me 180. There's no other number that it plus itself gives me 180. 90 is the only one. So if these were right angles, I know they're not in this picture, but if they were 90 degree angles, then, oh, then I'd have a square. So uh, this is sometimes, sometimes true when we have a square. Because remember, a square is a type of rhombus. So if we're talking about a square, we're talking about a rhombus. Because a square is a rhombus. It's a rhombus with a little bit more. So, uh, angle Q being congruent to angle R is sometimes true when we have a square. If we don't have a square, not true. Let's check and see if we were correct. For any rhombus, yeah, okay. By the definition, rhombus is a parallelogram. Parallelogram opposite angles theorem. So always true. Yes. And you are when it is a square, mm -hmm, but not all rhombuses are squares. So this statement is sometimes true. Booyah. We were correct. Okay. Let's move on to another example. Classifying special quadrilaterals. So... Now it's asking us to classify the special quadrilateral. What is this? Is it rhombus? Is it a rectangle? Square? Parallelogram? What? It's a, it's a quadrilateral. Obviously it has four sides, but can I get more specific than a quadrilateral? Is it a parallelogram? Is it a rectangle? Whatever. So, uh, something I notice it has four congruent sides. So I already know it's a rhombus because it has four congruent sides. Now, can I get more specific than a rhombus? The only thing more specific than a rhombus is a square. Is this a square? Well, no, I see right here that one of the angles is 70 degrees. And because this is a parallelogram, the other one needs to be 70 and the other need to be supplementary to 70. So these are not four congruent angles, not four right angles. So it's not a square. So it's a rhombus. And that's all the more specific we can get because it's not a square. And that's what this tells us is it's not a square. The 70 degrees and the 110 degrees tell us that this is not a square because there are not four right angles. Okay, let's check and see if we were correct. 
Four congruent sides, so by the rhombus cor eh, corollary, the quadrilateral is a rhombus. One of the angles is not a right angle. It cannot be a square. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to learn some more interesting things about rhombuses. So, uh, a bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> English. The rhombus diagonals theorem says uh, a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So if we draw the diagonals, if we connect the opposite angles, the opposite corners of a rhombus, those need to meet at a right angle. If they meet at a right angle, we have a rhombus. And if I have a rhombus, the diagonals must meet at a right angle. Goes both ways. That's what the if and only if tells us, is that it goes both ways. Okay. And we have a rhombus opposite angles theorem. We had a parallelogram opposite angles theorem. Now we have a rhombus opposite angles theorem. So a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So what this says is I know that angle C and angle A are congruent because they're opposites. But even more than that, this diagonal bisects the angle. So now we know that ADC is congruent to ABC, which is congruent to BCA, which is congruent to DCA. So now we know that these four angles are congruent and these four angles are congruent. So the diagonals, not only are they perpendicular, but they also bisect the vertices or bisect the angles of the rhombus itself. Okay, awesome. So now that we've seen these theorems, let's use them in another example. Finding angle measures in a rhombus. Find the measure of the numbered angles in rhombus A, B, C, D. Okay, so we, I noticed that there is a one, there's a two, three, and a four. So there are four angles that we're trying to find the measure of. So let's look at one first. One is the corner where the diagonals meet. Hey, didn't we just learn that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular? So angle one has to be 90 degrees. Has to be. Because if this is a rhombus, and it says it is, it says we have a rhombus ABCD, that means that these diagonals meet at a 90 degree angle. They are perpendicular. So angle one is 90 degrees. Now, the measure of angle two. So this is angle CAB that we're looking at. Hmm. Well, I know that measure of angle two is the same as the measure of angle three, because in the rhombus opposite angles theorem, I have that the diagonal uh, bisects the angle. So we know that angle two and angle three are the same. So that helps that these are the same. But what are they? Well, wait a minute. We see, we see that angle DCA is 61, and because the diagonals bisect each corner angle, we know that this is 61. And remember, opposite angles are congruent in parallelograms, and a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. So that means that angle two is 61, and angle three is also 61. So we had to use the parallelogram opposite angles theorem and we used the rhombus opposite angles theorem for that part of the problem. Now, angle four is a little bit trickier, but I know, okay, so I know the measure of angle C 
is 61 plus 61. So this, the measure of angle C is 122 degrees. I can find what the measure of angle D is because these are supplementary. They add up to 180. So the measure of angle D is 180 minus 122, which is 58. So angle D is equal to 58. Now angle four is not equal to 58. The whole angle D is equal to 58. And we know that the diagonal bisects angle D, so angle four must be half of 58, which is 29. So for the first, for the measure of angle one, we used the rhombus diagonals theorem. Rhombus Diagonals Theorem, THM I'm using to mean theorem, and the Rhombus Opposite Angles Theorem was used for the rest of these. Rhombus Opposite Angles Theorem. Okay, let's check and see if we were correct. Measure of angle one is 90. Measure of angle two and three is 61 because of each diagonal of a rhombus intersect. Yes, perfect. And, oh, they did it a little bit differently than us. They used the triangle sum theorem. They knew that angle three was 61 and angle one was a right angle. So they just used this triangle that these three must add up to 180. That's smart too. They, they got the same answer as us. So hey, if that's easier for you, might as well do it that way. But yeah, 90, 61, 61, and 29. We were correct. Awesome. That is all I have for you today. So at this point in the video, it is time to assess your understanding of the learning target and the success criteria. Do you know what rhombuses, rectangles, and squares are? And can you use properties of rhombuses specifically to solve problems? Are you confused and need to ask questions? Do you think you got it and you need to work on the homework? Or are you totally good and you're ready to help other people? Where are you at? How are you doing? Assess. Take inventory of how, how you're understanding the material. Now, here are some practice problems that you can do to practice the skills that you have learned in this video. Rhombus things and classifying quadrilaterals. All right, and let's end our video with a launch, just like usual. So today's launch comes from Neil A. Maxwell, and he says, we should certainly count our blessings, but we should also make our blessings count. I love this. People say count your blessings, and it's like focus on all the blessings. Count the blessings, count the good things in life, don't count the bad things in life. We should certainly do that. We should certainly count our blessings. But we should also make our blessings count. What does that mean? What does that mean to make a blessing count? How are you using the blessings that you have? For example, like I'm blessed with a green screen and a microphone, so I'm trying to bless my students and my colleagues by making YouTube videos. Um, I am blessed with a wonderful house, so you know I'm trying to let people use the house as they need to. Um, our friends or our family, if they need, you know, a place to do something. Um, what is it that you're blessed with that you could make count? Can you use it to help someone else? Can you use it to make the world a better place? So, make, don't just count your blessings. Of course, count your blessings, but also make them count. Find a way to, uh, to do some good with the blessings that you have. That is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. 
Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.